Amen. Amen. So the church is like a school where we come together to learn God's word. Hallelujah. We come to learn the word of God. Praise the Lord. And uh, so that we can be strengthened. Amen. We can be edified. Amen. We can really know who we are, what we have, and what belongs to us, what we can do, our possibilities. Amen. Amen. So we come to church so that we can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why uh, when we come to church, we should always make sure we come with our Bible, our notebook, and our pen. This is very important. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know some of us might, uh, might have attended churches where they don't worry whether you bring Bible or not, as long as you bring your offering. But in this ministry, we care very much for your soul. You have to come to church with your Bible. And if you don't have one, one will be provided for you so that you can follow us. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So this morning, let's look into the scripture. Let's look at the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians in the New Testament. Amen. Ephesians. Please, you can help your neighbor. If you see that your neighbor is struggling with opening the, the, the text, please. Uh, help the person. It's very important. Amen. The book of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. I'll be reading up to verse 23. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 to 23. It says, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which you to which he has called you, and what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? Verse 19. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and, ev- and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Verse 22 and 23. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all you know, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here we see Paul, the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, in, uh, passing a very important message to the believers in Ephesus, in the city of Ephesus. Now, he had preached the gospel to these people. They have heard the gospel that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day. They have believed that only by faith in his finished works, that is his death and resurrection for our sins, that they are forgiveness of sins in his blood. That was very clear because he told them, if you look at verse 7, he mentioned it in verse 7 of that same chapter 1. Verse 7, he says, in him we have redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. So these people have been saved. To be saved is to receive forgiveness of sins. It's not about joining a church. It's not about, uh, you know, change of uh, behavior or moral uh, or behavioral modification. 
It's not about behavioral modification. It's about a change of heart, a spiritual surgical operation that takes place in our heart by which God takes away the old, stubborn, sinful, sin-loving heart, and it gives us a new heart, a new spirit. This is what it means to be saved. This is what it means to be redeemed. This is what it means to be born again. Hallelujah. And God has done this for us by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. So they have believed the gospel. And because they have believed, Paul said that he had been praying for them. He said it in verse 15. He says, because I have heard of your faith. I have heard of your what? Faith. Now, he has heard about their belief in Christ. That they have faith in Christ. So, they belong to their family. They are, they are blessed because of their faith. Hallelujah. They have been accepted as righteous, as blessed people because they believe. But it went further, even though we cannot see their faith, which is in their hearts. Amen. Faith produces works. Hallelujah. Faith produces what? Works. Genuine faith. Living faith produces action. If you say you have faith, but your faith is dormant, your faith is inactive. There's no action. There is no demonstration of that faith. That faith is a dead faith. That's why James said, faith without works, that is corresponding work, is what? Dead. So, these people said they have believed. And then Paul said, I have heard of your faith. Which means, if you truly believe in Jesus, people can observe it. People can see it in you. Even though faith is of the heart. Faith is of what? The heart. Faith is in your heart. But faith will move you to do certain things. Faith will begin to work in you, producing certain works in you. Hallelujah. If your faith is genuine. Amen. And one of the evidence of the works of faith is what he mentioned. Say, I heard of your faith and of your love. Your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints. Hallelujah. So if someone truly believes in Jesus Christ, if his faith or her faith is genuine, not counterfeit, the person will love fellow brothers and sisters. You will love the children of God. It doesn't matter the, the denomination they belong to. Even if they are not members of his own local assembly, as long as they believe, they have that same faith of Christ, that salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and they believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again on the third day, he accepts them as members of the family of God. Hallelujah. You have love for God's people. If you truly have faith in Christ, that faith will produce in you love. Because that faith will bring the Holy Spirit into your heart. Amen. The Holy Spirit comes into your heart. These people, they have received the Spirit of God. And the Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. So, when you truly believe in Jesus Christ, you will love. You will love the brethren. Hallelujah. If you don't love the brethren, if there is something in you that doesn't love to be in a gathering like this, a, the gathering of God's children, there's something in you that is always not loving, it, it finds gathering like this a punishment, a, a kind of um, uh, irritation, a kind of grief to, his, to your spirit. If coming to a place, the, the thought of coming to church, to the gathering of God's people, does not excite you, does not uh, um, uh, you know, inspire you, does not make you smile. Rather, you wish there was no service. You wish there was no meeting. You are not born again, to be frank with you. You are not. You are not. Because when you are truly born again, that born again will put something in you, which is called the love of God. You will just, if you are not going to church before, you just find out that you have desire to go to church. 
you want to be in the con congregation of the saints. That is it. That is one of the first mark evidence of being born again. There is a kind of desire in you. Your flesh initially, because of your old way of life, may kind of resist it, reluctant. You might find it difficult to wake up in the morning, but there's something in you that wants to go to church. You want to see your fellow brethren. Hallelujah. Your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints. Hallelujah. You will love the saints, whether they are rich or they are poor you will love them. Whether they are educated or illiterate, you will love them. Whether they are male or female, whether they are full able-bodied or they are handicapped in any way, you will still love them. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So, love will be better than you. You will love people. Glory to God. You will love. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, this is how the world will know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. Hallelujah. So loving the brethren is an important and indispensable evidence of being born again. You will love the brethren. You will love to be in church. So anyone that finds it difficult, we have to beg you, we have to push you, we have to beg you, we have to draw you to come to church. You are not born again. You are not yet born again. You are close, but you are not there yet. Amen. The moment a person receives this life of Christ, he just wants to be among the saints. He loves it. Hallelujah. Before I got born again, they, uh, you know, there were people who came to invite me to church. I find it very hard. I find, oh, I, I just didn't like to go to church. I didn't want to go to it. That's what they are doing there when they force me there and I have, and I'm there, I'm, I'm swollen. I'm not happy. I'm just like, what are all these? When they are clapping and singing, I'll just be looking at them. When they are teaching the word of God, it's not, I'm thinking of something else. I just wish that meeting should be over. And the only time I'm happy is when they say, we are closing now. Uh -huh. I'm awake. Yes, you're about to go home. Good, good. Then when we say, let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, uh, that with that one, you hear my voice. Yeah, uh, uh, the love of God, yeah, fellowship. Amen, amen. I'm gone. Amen. No, I'm nothing. And when I hear that they are not holding fellowship today because of something, I'm very happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Very happy. So I, I, I was glad. I was happy. But when I received Christ, when Christ came to live in me, when I received eternal life, everything changed. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything changed. I became a lover of God and of his people. My desire was in the house of God. I became like David who said, how I wish to be in the house of God all the days of my life. Amen. Before service begins, the, from my house to the church was like what? It was like from here to Asigame, the big market. From my house to the church. I'm telling you, the distance. But you know what? I will walk. I will jog. I'll make sure I get to church before 6 p.m. Before the service starts. And on Sunday, I'm there. And then I was excited to serve the Lord. When they say, uh, choir, there are people in the choir, I'm excited to serve. Oh, this one. Uh, I'm, in fact, I, I almost uh, uh, was serving in three different departments because I was just excited. I just wanted to serve the Lord. I want to, you know, that is it. When you are born again, there is that love of God and the love of the brethren. In you look at the book of John, first John to be precise, first John chapter 5, verse 1. First John chapter 5, verse 1. The book of first John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ. Has been born of God. That's the first part I want you to know. Look at that. It says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, that is the Savior, the Messiah. He said, that person surely has been born of God. That is what it takes to be born again. To believe 
in Jesus Christ, to believe in the Son of God, to see that Jesus, not just as a son of Mary, not just as a prophet, not just as a good teacher, but as the Christ, the Messiah, the one and only way, the one and only truth, the one and only life. No one comes to the Father except by him. When you believe that, the Bible says you are born of God. That is, you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's the first part. That is faith. Now, the second part of that verse, it says, and Everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. That means if you claim that you love God, the Father, you must also love those who are born of him. That is, if you love the Father, you must love his children. Is that not true? You cannot say you love me. I hate my children. You love Pastor Joseph, or you hate Emmanuel, you hate Marvelous, you hate David. You don't want to see them, you don't, or you don't really love me. Your love for me is uh, hypocritical, it's not genuine. Hallelujah. Because these children, they are part of me, they carry my DNA, my blood is in their blood, they, they represent me anywhere they are. Hallelujah. So you cannot say you love me and you don't love my children. Glory to God. So this is what John is saying that whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ that believes in him as the Messiah he says he's born of God. He has become a child of God. So when you claim that you are a child of God but you don't love those who are born of God, you don't like to associate with them. You don't have fellowship with them. It, 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 uh, irritates you, it, 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 it bores you to come to the ga gathering of the saints, you are not a true child of God. It's not. It's not. You can't fake it. You can't. Hallelujah. When somebody, that's one of the signs by which I know that somebody truly received the gospel. For example, the day I preached to uh, my daughter in the Lord, Della, that day we preached, if Sister Doris will remember, we preached to two persons. Two. One's house was closer. To this, to this place, we met Della, the father distance. But you know what? Out of the two, we out of the two, how many of them came to Justice Adoris? Only one. And it, she has been coming since then. The other person, I went several, he come only one, two, three times. <laughs> in fact, they come in, I have to go and pull him, beg him to come. And I knew him. So I kept preaching the gospel to him again as if he had never heard it. Because I know he has not, he has not heard it. Hallelujah. So he has not heard it. He claimed that day that we preached to him that he believed. He did not claim that he believed. But coming to the congregation of the saints become difficult. He doesn't even go to church. He just stay in his house. And he says he's born again. He is not born again. Amen. There are outward proofs of being born again. Even though going to church doesn't, mean, doesn't make you born again. That's not what... No, but if you are born again, you will go to church. Do you understand? Hello? Hi. You understand what I mean? Good. Good. If you are a uh, a doctor, a doctor, you wear, you know, you know how to use uh, what's that called? That stethoscope, is that not what they call it? Stethoscope. You know how to use it. But knowing how to use it, does it make you a doctor? No. It doesn't mean you are a doctor. But a doctor must know how to use it. Is that not true? A doctor must love to go to hospital. Is that not so? Ah. You, you get it? What you get my logic now? Very good. So. Going to church doesn't make you a child of God. But if you are truly a child of God, you will go to church. You will. You will love to go to church. You just will love it. Hallelujah. Now let's get back to the book of uh, Ephesians so that we continue from there. Now, having established that they were believers, having established that they, they are saved and there is fruit or evidence of genuine salvation in them, now he now said something. He said... I do not cease, that's in verse 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Do you know how I give thanks for the life of every one of you? That I have preached to and you believed. Every one of you. As I'm looking at your faces, I know, I remember how I preached the gospel to each and every one of you and I give thanks. So when you preach to somebody, and the person has believed, and you can see the fruit of that salvation, of that eternal life manifesting in that person. Learn to give thanks for the life of that person. 
Hallelujah. Amen. He says, I give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, which means we must remember those we are preached to in our prayers. When you preach to people, remember them in your prayer. That's why you write down their names and their phone numbers, their contacts, so that you can pray for them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then the prayer that Paul was praying, that's what I want us to look at. The prayer of Paul for believers is prayer. What kind of prayer did Paul pray for those who believe? Because sometimes we don't know how to pray for ourselves as believers and for those that we preach to. But the Bible gives us sufficient information, sufficient direction, sufficient instruction about how to pray for those who are believers, for ourselves and other believers. And he mentioned the kind of prayer I was praying for them in verse 17. He says that, he said, I remember in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of what? Wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. And of what? Revelation. In the knowledge of him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, having, in verse 18, having, your, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, glory to God, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, this, uh, this is a prayer of Paul for believers. In those days, and it's still the same today. In fact, as your pastor, this is the prayer I pray for you. Amen. Amen. That you will be given, that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. You see, after we are born again, there is something we need to pursue. There's something we must go after, and that is knowledge. That is what? Knowledge. Accurate, precise knowledge of God himself, our Father, and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then, in knowing God and Jesus Christ, we get to know ourselves in him. Because we are now in him. So, we, it's not um, knowledge of uh, uh, how witches do meetings in the night. It's not knowledge of our uh, midnight prayer. That's not what we start learning. We don't start learning about enemy, 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 generational curses, etc. That's not what we learn. We learn Christ and ourselves in him. Hallelujah. It is by learning Christ, knowing Christ, that we get to know ourselves in him. We know who we are. Then that, that is what produces true genuine, lasting spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The kind of food that you eat will determine how healthy your growth will be. I believe you understand. That's why we were taught balanced diet at school. Were we not taught? You know the, the, the essential uh, food, uh, food that we should eat. Is that not so? How we should eat carbohydrate, protein, fat, and oil, and all the rest of them. Aha! Uh -huh. For sound, healthy growth. In the same way, after you are born again, the kind of teaching, the kind of doctrine, the kind of words you are listening to matters a lot. The kind of thing they are teaching you, how they interpret the Bible to you, can either build you up or destroy you. Bible have been used by some pastors to destroy people's lives because of the way they interpreted it. I'm, I'm sure you are still very much aware of what's happening in uh, uh, Kenya. How this pastor there said people should fast to meet Jesus. What kind of a crazy thing is that? And they have counted dead bodies now, over 200. Fasting to meet Jesus. He taught them about fasting. And he, he, he turned the Bible upside down and destroyed their lives. Families have been destroyed. All families have been destroyed. 
So what you are listening to matters a lot. Be careful the kind of person, the kind of preacher, the kind of pastor, the kind of teacher you are listening to. There are so many apostles in the world today. There are many prophets in the world today. They have big congregation. They have fine building. They have everything. They, they, they have access to internet and all those things. Oh, but listen. Thank God for their lives. Thank God for the testimonies. Thank you for the miracles. We thank God for that. But listen. The question you should ask is not the miracles. It's not whether miracles are happening. Whether they are seeing accurate visions and they are giving accurate prophecies. Even Satan too can do all that. But you know what? The question is, what are they teaching you about Christ and about you in him? Are they revealing who you are in Christ to you? Or they are preaching in such a way that they elevate themselves above you? How are they presenting you? Are they revealing who you are in Christ to you? Do they make you to become dependent on them? So that before you even eat, man of God, should I eat? Man of God, should I travel? You want to know all those things. It's because of teaching. How you are taught. How the Bible is interpreted. And we need accurate knowledge. And that's why the best thing, after being born again, the best thing you can have is a good pastor who will teach you the word of truth. Amen. Amen. God said to, to the children of Israel, I will give you shepherds according to my heart, pastors according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. Very, very important. I, I was in a, I was on a, uh, an in, uh, you know, internet call with a sister yesterday in the U.S. and we were talking, and she was asking me questions, and I made her to know that look, what people are being taught. Matters a lot. It will determine how they grow. It matters. So what you are listening to. See, a lot of believers, they want to go to a place where it's beautiful. We thank God. God is helping us. This place wasn't like this before. It's improving, isn't it? But that is not the thing. My concern is you, your life. How you are growing in the faith. How you are growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you are growing, you are knowing yourself in him. Whether you are able to explain the gospel to other people and lead them to Christ just as I have led you. It matters to me. Hallelujah. And if you truly are born again, you will desire to hear the truth. You will want to go to, to a place where, you, in fact, when you are hearing some things, you will know this thing is not, because the Holy Spirit will be bearing witness in you that this thing is not, it's not, you will not feel comfortable. You just want to, and when you start hearing the truth, you will know that this one is correct. Hallelujah. Now, the question now will be whether you will choose to stay where you have heard the truth. Or your pride and the love of the world and the love for uh, shine, shine things, and you know, will drag you back to the whole place. But if you truly have the love of the truth, you will stay where you have been taught the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So, Paul's prayer for believers is that they will have knowledge, true knowledge. In fact, all his prayers for believers, if you look at the book of Ephesians, the book of Colossians, the book of Philippians, uh, Thessalonians, all his letters to the churches, he kept praying on this subject matter of knowledge, epignosis, the full, precise, and accurate knowledge of God in Christ Jesus and of ourselves in him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, but what, what I want to uh, zero in, what I want to uh, focus on this morning and maybe subsequent week, maybe, I hope. I know definitely I cannot finish today. I know. Amen. But we'll continue next week, but I know because of the content. I've not even flipped the page yet. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want us to look at what Paul says in verse 18. Because that's where I'm, I'm going. He says, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened. Having the eyes of your hearts, what? Enlightened. That's what I am really talking about. That spiritual enlightenment. Amen. That what? Enlightenment. Praise the Lord. 
Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Paul says he wants the, the eyes of their hearts to be what? Enlightened. Wow. Is that not wonderful? So it means your heart or your mind has a eyes. Amen. It has what? A eyes. So it means what matters to God is not your physical eyes. What matters more to him is the eyes of your heart. Whether the eyes of your heart is seen correctly or not. Because, they see, Satan doesn't worry about your physical body. Though he may damage you with sickness, but there is a worse damage that Satan tries to do to people. And what is it? He blinds people's hearts. The eyes of people's minds, the eyes of their hearts, he blinds it. So, their eyes are very sharp physically, but their hearts are blinded by the devil. Amen. Amen. Let's look at some scripture and let's see uh, what he's saying. The book of Isaiah. Isaiah. You see, the, the, the Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah 44. I'm reading in verse 18. The book of Isaiah chapter 44. I'm reading verse 18. Isaiah 44. It's a very lovely chapter. I think I will advise you on your own to read the whole chapter. It's a lovely chapter. Book of Isaiah chapter 44. I'm reading verse 18. They know not, nor do they discern, for he has shut their eyes. I believe I've explained that E for you before. Good. E has shut their eyes so that they cannot see and their hearts so that they cannot what? Understand. Now, in context, who are these people? These are idolaters. People who worship idols. Because if you read it, you will see that he's talking about people who make idols. They go and get a piece of nice wood, maybe mahogany or whichever one. They get a good uh, wood. They begin to carve it and shape it into an idol, an image. Are you following? Hello? Now, as they are carving the wood, part of the wood, they will use it to make fire in the night and be warming themselves. They say, ah, it's really warm. Audio. The wood, oh, they will cut it, use it to even cook their food. Hello? And that's the wood that they make in their own, they are the one who designed it. They designed it. Then they will now place that wood on the ground and worship it. Can you imagine the stupidity? What you make with your own hands, you carved it, you cooked with part of it, now you put it down and you are bowing to it. Hallelujah. He says the reason why you see people act like that, why they bow to idols, non-living thing, why they bow to image of iron, of stone, of, of cement, of uh, wood, whatever kind, bronze or gold. He said the reason is because he has blinded them. He has shut their eyes. So they cannot reason properly. They cannot understand what they are doing. If you are trying to even tell them, they say, ah, this God is our God. Our ancestors have been worshipping it. Why? They are blind. They are blind. So the person who has not received the life of Christ into him is blind. He might be a professor. He might be a professor of anthropology, of whatever. Listen. Listen. As long as he cannot see Christ. As long as he does not understand Christ. He might even go to a seminary. But he is spiritually blind. Hallelujah. The word of God makes no sense to him or her. It means the person is spiritually blind. And because of this blindness of the heart. 
This inability, inability of the heart to understand the love of God, the, the works of God, the ways of God. This lack of the knowledge of God is what produces certain behaviors and characters, ungodly behaviors and characters in people. It is because people lack knowledge of God. Why does the thief steal? Why is it that arm robbers steal? It's not because economy is hard. It's because there is no job. It's because in his heart he's blind. Why do you have little young ladies who go about flirting with boys? Or they will say they might tell you excuse and say, "Oh, it's because uh, I don't have anybody to help me, and uh, you see, I need money, and that's why I'm flirting around." Listen, it's not because there's no money; it's because she's blind spiritually. The heart is blind. That's why uh, the devil has deceived her. She cannot understand. The moment she becomes born again, she will depart from that. Hallelujah. The moment that thief becomes born again, he will depart from that. Hallelujah. So, that darkness of the heart, you know, when someone is blind, what does he see? Is it not darkness? So, the darkness of the heart is manifesting in people as sin, actions of sin. But the moment you believe in Jesus Christ, the light of God comes to your heart. Hallelujah. You are born again. Glory to God. So, look at the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts. The book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. So that you understand what I'm saying. We are looking at verse 18. The book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. The book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Now, let's look at verse 18. Verse 18. Are you there? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verse 18. Now, Paul the Apostle was giving testimony before King uh, <clears throat> Agrippa and others. And he was telling them about how he encountered Christ. And then how Christ commissioned him to uh, the, well, the ministry of the gospel. Now, this is a statement of commission by the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a statement of his commission by the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, Jesus said, I am sending you to both Jews and Gentiles. Verse 18, now he says, to open their eyes. Did you see that? He said, I'm sending you to do what? Open. Now, but when Paul gets there, do you think he will see people who are blind who are groping around? No. But Jesus said, I'm sending you to go and do what? Open their eyes. Which means they are what? Blind. Though they are walking around, but they are blind. Amen. They are blind. That's why they are doing that. That's why they are worshipping idols. That's why they are in coven of witchcraft and sorcery. That's why they patronize the abalis and all the rest. That's why they, they, they do all those things. That's why they steal. That's why they go to where they smoke and drink. Because their hearts are blind. The eyes of their mind, the eyes of their heart is blind. Take note of the word used. Blind. That's the word used. Blind. Amen? You will understand by the time we get to, we go, we go back to the book of Ephesians. You will understand why I say you take note of that word blind. Hallelujah. You blinded them. So though they can see all around but they were blind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, he said to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to who? God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Hello? So, spiritual blindness is what keeps people away from God. Hallelujah. Spiritual blindness is what keeps people in religion. 
Like the Pharisees. The Pharisees, they believed that they could see because of their religiosity. But Jesus told them in John chapter 9, he said, you are blind. He told them. He said, you are blind. You cannot see. You think you can see, but you are not seeing. You are blind. Hallelujah. Hello? If you see what is going on in the world today, if you know what is going on in America and Europe, all these LGBT nonsense that people are talking about, hello, is because of what? Blindness of the heart. It's blindness. It's blindness of the heart. We love people, but we do not approve of their behavior. Amen? Just as Christ loves sinners, but he does not approve of sin. In the same way, if I see an LGBT person, a lesbian or an homosexual today, I will love that person. Or I will, I will shake the person, I will embrace the person. Or I will eat and drink with the person. I know he's blind. And my goal is to open his eyes, to open their eyes. Because all the lies that Satan are pumping to their hearts, that uh, a male can mistakenly fall into the body of a female, or a female can fall into, then you need trans, uh, transgender surgery and all those things. It's just foolishness. How professor of anthropology cannot define the difference between a male and a female? It's clear. What is simple biology? Simple science. Male, female. Now, define female. You cannot. Define male. You are, you are not, we are now confused. And we are now confusing our children. And now telling children, now telling parents, you cannot tell your child, your own child, that he is a male or female. It's, it now become a crime to tell your child that you are a male because of your physiology. You are a female because of your physiology. In that point, we, are, we twist their brain, we brainwash them. All those things, that's what is happening. Why is that happening to America and Europe? Why is this thing becoming, why they are doing this gay thing? Why? It's because of what? Spiritual blindness. Satan has blinded their minds. Satan has blinded the eyes of their minds. So they reject the truth. They reject Christ. They oppose the Bible. They oppose the scripture. And that is why they go deeper and deeper and deeper into sin, into that kind of life. Paul the Apostle mentioned in the book of Romans chapter 1. He mentioned what is happening today. It's not new. It's been happening. Oh, oh, oh. It's been happening long time. All oh, this gay thing they are doing now. Uh, male, male, falling, you know, female sleeping with female. Oh, this has been happening. LGBTQ has been existing long ago. And the Bible has said the truth about it. And on this truth we stand. Amen. Amen. Marriage is between Adam and Eve, not between Adam and Steve. Amen. Glory to God. It's between Adam and Eve, not between Eve and Evelyn. Amen. Amen. You understand? We've got to know the truth. Why do people go into such things? Why do people are trying to defend what is wrong in the name of tolerance, in the name of human rights? It's because what has happened to them is blindness. There is a heart blindness. Their hearts are blind. They are well educated, but they are spiritually blind. And that's why when some of them become born again, when some of them receive the gospel, they receive Christ, they come out of it. Forget about those these fake people that say they are pastors or they are priests and they say pastor, pa, a pastor is marrying a, a, pa, a female pastor is marrying a, another female person. All those people are not born again. They are just uh, pretentious. Many people think they are born again. They are not born again. What they heard is not the gospel. What they heard is this American gospel. Not this American gospel that just talk about uh, social life. Social life. Social life. Uh, uh, you know, emotions. Emotions, good emotions. Amen? Amen? No. The gospel is not about emotions. The gospel is not about social, you know, social things. It's about life of God in you. And there's no way that life of God will come into you and you will not live the life of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So we need to have our eyes open as we hear the gospel. So the sinner's eyes, the eyes of his heart, is what? Blind. The devil has blinded. Amen. He cannot see. He cannot understand. He's blind. Glory to God. 
as a glory to God. If you look at the book of 2 Corinthians, you see Paul lays emphasis again in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm reading verse 3. Verses 3 and 4. The book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. And if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world, that is what Isaiah called E. You understand now? The God of this world has what? Blinded. That's the word. He has what? Blinded the minds of the unbelievers. So he has blinded their minds to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. So why is it that the unbeliever is rejecting Christ? It's because Satan has blinded the eyes of his mind. And that is why, before we go on evangelism, we give time for prayer. Because we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We've got to pray and take authority over the powers assigned by the devil against every individual person we are meeting. Because Satan doesn't want his prisoners to be free. He doesn't want them to believe the gospel. He will enter them and begin to argue and begin to argue and argue. Resisting that gospel. Sometimes you bring friends around them that will say, Charlie, let's go. And things like that. that just to reject the gospel. Why? The eyes of their minds are blind. Glory to God. And that's what you need to pray. You have a relative that is not born again. You have been trying to bring that person to church. Pray. Start praying, God, open the eyes of this person. Let the eyes of this person be open. When you are saying let the eyes be open, you are not talking about this one. You are talking about the heart. Hallelujah. Because until that heart is open, until the, heart, the eyes of the heart is open, he cannot really understand what you are saying. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Is somebody getting it? Yes. Are you with me this morning? I said, are you with me this morning? Yes. I hope your eyes are open. Yes. But if your eyes have not been opened, it will be open this morning. Yes. I said, it will be open this morning. Yes. It's not by prayer. This one is not prayer where we'll say, blind eye, view. that's not. This one doesn't open by prayer. It opens by the hearing of the gospel, as we are hearing. That Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he was, he was raised on the third day. The moment you believe in Christ, the eyes of your heart are opened. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you are no more blind. Amen. Amen. So the believer in Christ is not spiritually blind. So if you are born again, you can say it with me. I am not spiritually blind. My spiritual eyes, the eyes of my heart, the eyes of my mind are open. Amen. You have heard the gospel. Therefore, the eyes of your heart are open. You are not spiritually blind at all. Amen. Is somebody getting that? You know, there's this great hymn. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Amen. The author of that hymn, if I, I don't think I remember the name very well, I think something Newton, whether Isaac, uh, no, John Newton. Now, John Newton was a slave trader. He traveled from, you know, his place, traveled to Africa and, and the Caribbean to take slaves. It was during the slave trade era. So, they were doing it. Catching people and selling them, making money. He had a ship. But in that, in the course of that thing, somebody preached a gospel to him in the ship. Somebody preached the gospel to him and revealed Christ to him. He got born again. This slave trader, slave master, became born again. 
Before he became born again, he had been hearing all oh, these things. A slave is not good, slavery is not. He did not mind. He saw them as well. It's just business. It's just business. But the day he got born again, his spiritual eyes were open. He stopped, he stopped slave trading. He stopped it. Hallelujah. Amen. He stopped it and he, he, he started preaching against slave trade. Hallelujah. See, you cannot truly encounter Jesus and continue in sin. No, cannot. If you encounter Jesus, you will not continue living in sin. You will not continue in the, in the, the behaviors and the actions of sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you are a drug peddler, you are, you, are, you, are, you are peddling drugs, cocaine, heroin, and other stuff, and we, you are, you are, you will not do it again. No matter what you make, how much you make from it, you will stop it. Because the life in you does not agree with that one. Amen. A new life has come. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. All things are what? Passed away. All things have become what? New. Hallelujah. So the life of God changes us from inside. It changes us from where? Inside. Hallelujah. I once was blind, but now I see. Amen. I see. And that is why when people who are blind, spiritually blind, when they see you going to church, carrying Bible and going to church, they start mocking you. They start mocking you and laughing at you, insulting and say, look at them, blind people. They are calling you blind, but they are the blind ones. Hallelujah. Amen. When you, when you are not uh, flirting, you are not flirting with them again, you know, and you say no more. They see you as, look at this one. Blind. They are the blind ones. I remember years ago when uh, I, I met uh, one of my whole school uh, mates in the, in the higher institution. We were students of engineering together at Ibadan. Now this guy, when we're on campus, I will go to him. We call him uh, Coyote. And we will, I will go and preach to him. I will go to his room. Oh, Coyote, let's go. I will preach Christ to him, invite him to, to fellowships, campus fellowship. He will tell me, oh, Ajao, I don't have time now. Uh, come, come tomorrow, I will go. Next, when is your next fellowship day? I will, say, I will mention, say, I will follow you next time, but not today. Sometimes I will meet his girlfriend, will be with him on the bed, and he will say, no, 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 I can't. you see, I have a, I have, I have, I have a guest. That was how it was. It? He and some other people, they looked at me and my fellow believers as blind people. These people are blind. Oh, religion is too much for them. Huh? You come to campus, you cannot enjoy life. They are really enjoying Oh, you was really enjoying life. Girls, you meet this girl today, you meet another girl tomorrow. That was the life he was living. His room was, you know, packaged for girls. His camp, his you know, hostel room was packaged. Oh, we were just on that floor. He brought rug, decorated the room. The walls are decorated. He had a small table for, uh, fridge. Everything for his, oh, he, he, and the room is always scented. Oh my God. All for girls, and he will lie at home to his mom and collect money just to sponsor his flirtatious life, his promiscuous life. But you know something? Years later, we graduated, we finished. I was tra I traveled to Ibadan and I got to a, a ring road area, ring road. And then somebody called me, say Ajao, and I said, "Who is that?" It was this same guy. Coyote, he was standing at the bus stop. And uh, he looked at me and said, Ajawa. the way he greeted me, he showed me that something has changed. Because this is a guy who doesn't want to even see me. He oh, said, please, I don't want that. Oh. But this day, he embraced me. He embraced me. He said, Ajawa, Ajawa, Ajawa. I said, oh, Coyote, how are you? Long time. Oh, how are you? He said, the very first thing he told me, I'm born again, no? Oh. I'm born again, <laughs> Which I'm born again now. I said, true? He said, yes. He said, I'm born again now. I'm born again now. And I said, oh, what happened? Then he explained how he got born again to me. Then he said something. He said, oh, how I wish I knew Christ that time 
you came preaching to me. He said, that time, I thought you were blind. I didn't know that I was the blind one. It, that's what he told me. He said, I thought I, I was the seeing one that you guys were blind. But now I know that, oh no, I was the blind one. Hallelujah. Amen. Later I came to my house and I met my wife and saw my wife and was greeting. So oh, your, your husband is a wonderful man. Amen. He used to preach to us on campus and he's still serving the Lord today. Amen. Amen. He's a member of the Winners Chapel in Nigeria and he's, that's Winners International and he's doing well, serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 See, people are blind. That's why they don't see. So when people are Forget about their education. Forget about their financial status. Forget about their position in the place where you work. It may even be your manager, maybe your director, but he's blind. He's blind. You need to pray for the person. Don't hate him. Don't hate her. Oh, the action of that woman or that man towards you, the persecution, the way he's persecuting you, insulting you. Oh, is because he or she is what? Blind. Don't forget that Paul, who wrote this epistle, he used to be blind. You remember that he was a persecutor of the church. He killed Stephen. Do you remember? You know, he killed a lot of believers. He was even traveling around arresting believers, forcing them to blaspheme. He was doing terrible things. And he thought that he was the seen one until the day he encountered Christ on the road to Damascus. And there he saw the living Christ. There he saw the light. Hallelujah. He saw the light. Glory to God. And that day his eyes were what? Open. And he saw Christ. Until a man sees Jesus, he is blind. Until a man receives eternal life, he's still blind. And that's why you will not blame him or her for the way they talk, the way they dress, the way they do things. Hallelujah. Amen. But now that our eyes have been opened, now the believer's eye is open. Paul is now saying in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, he said, I am praying that the eyes of your heart the eyes of your heart might be what? Enlightened. Now, there's a difference between blindness and enlightenment. There's a big difference between the two. He did not say, I am praying that your eyes be open. Did he say that? Did he say, I'm praying that your eyes be open? So, I don't pray that your eyes be open. But Paul said, I pray that your eye be what? Enlightened. So the believer needs enlightenment. He needs illumination. The Greek word, the Greek word that is translated enlightened is the word photizo. Photizo. Photizo means to be flooded with light. To be what? Flooded. Like you are in a dark room, a dark room. Then light is turned on. Now you can see. Now there's a big difference between a blind person and a seeing person who are inside a dark room. Hello? This person is blind. The other person is not blind. But both of them are inside a dark room. You know what they call a dark room? Thick dark room. You understand? The one that the photographers use. Really dark room. Uh -huh. Now, initially, both of them are equal. Is that not? Both of them cannot see anything inside that room. Is that not so? But when you turn on the light, you will not see the difference. Hello? The difference is that even after light has been turned on, the blind man cannot see that light. Is that true? He cannot. But the one who can see, who is not blind, now will have the benefit of light. He will now know that, oh, there is... Uh, uh, milk here. Yeah. There is uh, bread here. Yeah. Oh, there is uh, food here. Yeah. There is this here. Yeah. So he can go for it specifically without pulling things down, scattering things. He can he can say, okay, I want to take sardine, and he'll go for it directly. The blind man cannot do that. 
is blind. Hallelujah. So, you are not blind in Christ. You can see. I want to say, I can see. I see. Because my eyes have been opened by the hearing of the gospel. I can see. Amen. So, when we come next week, I will take it off from there. So that we will see what it means to be enlightened. And if you go to that Ephesians, please go back there. I want to show something. Part of what I'll be explaining when we come next Sunday. When we come next Sunday, I will be explaining um, something because I jumped something and I, I think I should, I, should, I should take it, but I will take it next Sunday. Amen. Hello? That's um, what Paul the Apostle said in verse 17. Uh, he said that God may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. What is the meaning of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation? Because he mentioned the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. That means the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. What are these? What, what does it mean? Hallelujah. What is what's meaning? What is he really saying? What is Paul saying? Hallelujah. Because Paul said that these people have received the Holy Spirit. So we want to know what does he now mean? So are we to pray and ask for uh, the spirit of wisdom, so spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation, come upon me. You know, we are going to know what he meant by that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. That will be part of what we are going to, I'm going to explain when we come next Sunday. Hallelujah. But what I want you to understand this morning is that the believer, the believer's eyes are open. The unbeliever's eyes are what? Blind. And in fact, they have been blinded. By who? Is it God? No. no. The God of this age, Satan, the enemy of man, has blinded their minds. Now, does ac academic excellence, education, you know, does it open people's eyes? No. The person must hear the gospel. Education, university education is good. Yes. University education is good. You should get the best of all education you can get. But listen, education does not open people's heart. What opens people's heart is the hearing of the gospel. And that's why Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't let it shock you. When you see somebody that is well educated, he attended university, he's even a PhD holder, a master's degree, a PhD holder, a doctorate degree holder, and he's still doing foolish things. Hello? It's spiritual blindness. A, a, a man that leaves his wife at home and is flirting with somebody outside, forget about the excuse he might be giving you. No, that woman, he doesn't know how to dress, he doesn't know how to do this, he doesn't know how to do that, he doesn't know how to. It's a lie. The truth is that he is what? Blind. He's blind. When, you, you can, when your eyes are open, you will, you will decorate your wife. You will pan a beat and do everything to put her to your taste. Amen. Amen. You will not be flirting around again. Glory to God. Are we blessed this morning? Yes. Are we blessed this morning? Yes. I said, are we blessed this morning? Yes. Do we understand? Yes. Do we understand? Yes. That when somebody believes in Christ, we will see it in their life. The love of God will be manifest. They will love God and they will love God's children. They will love to come to church. They will love to be in the garden of the saints. They will like to discuss spiritual things. They want to know more about Jesus. They want to know more. So Bible becomes very dear to them. Hallelujah. They love their Bible. It's no more a religious book to them. It has now become a treasure to them. Coming to church is no more a religious performance. No, it has become a life. Hallelujah. They love the brethren. It's not, it's not just, uh, they are not just coming to church to do socials, you know. Socials, no. Not socials. They have come for fellowship. Fellowship of the saints. Hallelujah. And we have understood that the unbeliever has been blinded by the devil. But through the hearing of the gospel, the, the 
unbelievers' eyes are open. He becomes a believer. Hallelujah. And he's born again. To be born again is to, eye, to have the eyes of your heart what? open. But if you are not yet born again this morning, you can be born again. The Bible says whoever believes. Whoever what? Believes. Whoever what? Believes. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Hallelujah. That's what you need. Faith in Christ. It's not about joining our church. It's not about getting a Bible. It's not about, uh, you know, about giving. No. It's about receiving Christ. Receiving him into your heart. And if you do that this morning, I want to guarantee you that your spiritual eyes are opened in Jesus' name. Let's be on our feet as we pray. Let's give thanks to God for his word. Let's appreciate God for his word. And say, Father, we thank you for giving us your word this morning. Thank you, King of Glory, for opening my eyes to see Jesus. Thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for opening my eyes to see Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory, because you have opened my eyes. I once was blind, but now I see amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? If you are not seeing yet, if you're, if there's no love of God in you, you still find it hard. You find it as if you are, you are being punished to come to church. My brother, my sister, you need to check yourself and receive and open yourself up to Christ and say, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come and pour your love into my heart by the Holy Spirit this morning. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. And I want you to pray for your friends. Pray for your friends. Pray for your family. Pray for your siblings. Pray for your, your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your children who are spiritually blind. They are not born again. Oh, pray. You have been trying to pull them to church. Pull them to church. Your own eyes are open. But uh, those ones, they are still finding it hard. They still give excuses. I want you to pray that the power of the God of this age upon their life be broken. That they will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That the light of God will shine into their heart. The, the power of the devil, the veil of Satan, be taken away from them. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus.